Good morning, PPT. Just want to give you another weekly update, uh, let you know some things that are happening or aren't happening in many cases, and just to share a little thought with you. Uh, earlier this morning, as I do the first of each month, I turned the page on a calendar that we keep here in our uh, dining room. It's April the 1st. We enter a new month. We don't know yet what this month will bring. We certainly hope that by the end of this month, we have more clarity and things are a little more back to what we consider to be normal. Someone said to me yesterday, wouldn't it be great if we woke up tomorrow morning and discovered that all of this was just one big April Fool? Well, unfortunately, uh, based on news this morning, it's not. We're still in the middle of the pandemic and still trying to deal with it. But I thought about an April Fool uh, prank that my son played on his roommate in college a few years ago. Maybe you've all had uh, April Fool pranks played on you. Maybe some of you had some this morning. But a few years ago, my son was in college. Uh, somehow throughout the night, he was able to get his uh, roommate's iPhone. Somehow had a passcode to get into it and change some settings. And so that his roommate woke up earlier than usual, a lot earlier than usual. Uh, went through his routine, got a shower, went uh, down the hallway to the cafeteria. When he came back, he commented on how empty the hallways were, unusually empty that morning. And the cafeteria empty, he ate breakfast by himself, I think. And so he came back and just thought how, how strange this all was. And of course, Lucas then told him how it was an April Fool that he had played on him. Well, as we've gone through the last few days and weeks, I've uh, noticed almost a very similar thing happening in real life, of course. I don't live far from Petawawa Boulevard, which is one of the busiest, if not probably the busiest section of traffic in the whole Renfrew County. And in particular, from McDonald's on the corner, uh, not down, not far from my house, to the base, uh, that's uh, usually during rush hour, that is just literally bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. And then if you go up the other way, of course, it's busy as well. And uh, in the last few days and last couple of weeks, drive out there, and it's almost empty. Maybe just a few cars go up through the other section where uh, Tim Horton's parking lot that's usually full is uh, empty, Starbucks, all these places that are usually very busy uh, now seem to be uh, be empty and takes a bit of uh, getting used to. Someone said this week that, and I agree with them, that one of the most unsettling things about all this is the unknowns. We don't know when it's going to end. We don't, nobody can say to us as of a certain date things get back to normal. And so we don't know. And it's almost always the unknowns that cause us more anxiety or stress than the things we know. At least when we know, we can make a plan to deal with them. But when we don't know, and we simply, we simply don't know. And there's a lot we don't know what's happening. We don't know how long. We don't know to what extent. Uh, we don't know the financial impact that it's going to have on some families, uh, the financial impact it's going to have on a country. We don't know the long-term impacts on families or even the mental strain that it's putting on people. And so there's so many unknowns. And how do you deal with unknowns in, uh, in these unknown times? I thought of a verse of scripture that I have looked to so many times or just been tried to remind myself with uh, so many times over the years, even in normal uh, times and normal unknowns or even times I've had maybe it's theological questions. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14, Paul writes to his friend, uh, Timothy, his protege. Paul is sort of a mentor to him and he wants to remind Timothy that when he faces uncertain times or times of questions, he says this to him. He says, continue in what you have learned and become, and become convinced of, or continue in what you know and are assured of. He says, Timothy, look at what you know when you face unknowns. And as I said, I've looked at this so many times, and Again, uh, yesterday, I think it was, I asked myself that question. What do we know? We, there's a lot we don't know. What do we absolutely know? Paul wrote to the Romans in chapter 8, and we have it in chapter 8, verse 20, 28. He says, we know that all things work together for good. Now, is this good? No, absolutely not. But somehow God has a way of taking all things in our lives, things that are good and even things that are not good, and takes circumstances 
And God has a way to work all of these things together for our ultimate good. And so while we're going through a time now that's not good economically, it's not good on uh, many fronts, but yet God has a way to work all things together for good. And so we know, that's one thing we can know, God works all things together for good to those who love him. A wonderful verse of scripture as well in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 19. We're reminded, we know that we are children of God. Hold on to that. Many things you don't know, know that. You are a child of God. And then in Ephesians, just a couple of verses here I just want to leave you with, sort of as a, as a prayer this morning, as a prayer for you today and throughout the remainder of this week. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 18, and this is my prayer for you. Paul says to his people, and I say this for mine this morning, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, that you may know the hope, know the hope. And then let me leave you, uh, before I give you a couple of updates, with these words from chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14. Paul says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that's at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. May you know, may you know the love, may you know the hope, May you know the peace. May you know that you are a child of God. And may we all know that all things work together for good to those that love him. Have a great week. I just want to give you a couple of updates uh, for our congregation as we have uh, been keeping you informed due to the direction that we're receiving from both the government, uh, the health authorities here in Renfrew County, as well as uh, our districts. We have closed our church building, closed the office, uh, we have had some requests for people who want to drop off, whether it's your offering uh, or other items. Uh, so even though the church office remains closed, there will be someone there uh, Friday mornings from 9 to 1. And if you want to drop off, whether it's an offering or uh, we would also encourage you, if you're able to drop off some food items, non-perishable food items. I just got off a a uh, teleconference, a Zoom meeting with the ministerial here in the area, and the food banks are at a uh, desperate low. Uh, people are turning more and more, of course, as they're facing layoffs and economic challenges. And so if you're able, uh, we're going to have, uh, as you come there to the office entrance, of course, we have a, 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 a locked door there, so you can buzz up to the office and uh, just leave your items. If you have food items, we'll have a box there for you to put them in. If you have an offering or a mail that you need to drop off, uh, we'll have it. We'll have a box there for that as well. You just buzz up to us, and uh, you can we can you can wait till we come down. We can smile at each other or wave at each other through the glass. Or if you uh, want to just make sure and you don't come in contact with anyone, just leave it there and let us know it's there. We'll come and get it. And so Friday mornings from nine uh, Fridays from nine till one. Uh, you can drop by there, just come to the entrance, buzz upstairs. We'll make sure we uh, take your items. And so, again, if you're able to bring food items as well, please do so. That will be a great help uh, to the food bank. Keep posted to social media uh, for our weekly updates on Wednesday as well as our church in your living room, which is our uh, Sunday uh, online worship. And uh, we are so pleased with how many of you joined us last Sunday. We'll be here again this week, of course. Regarding Easter, uh, we had announced that we were endeavoring to do an Easter Saturday event. Pastor Danette uh, was working on that for the children and for the whole church family. And while we were making sure we were observing all protocols, and I think we would have, uh, after giving it uh, some more thought, 
and talking among ourselves and with some other folks, we uh, thought that uh, maybe we should exercise the scripture that Paul uses, while all, thing, all things may be lawful, uh, maybe not all things are profitable. And so to avoid the uh, possibility or uh, maybe even the uh, possibility of spreading uh, something or at least the appearance of that, then we decided that we would postpone that event until after the protocols are lifted. And so we will may have Easter in May or whatever, but this event will go ahead and we want you to join us uh, for it. And so uh, on Good Friday morning, we'll be hosting a just a brief family uh, communion time, a scripture reading prayer, uh, family communion. So we want you to prepare for that. I'll give you more details on Sunday and we will be with you on Easter Sunday morning with church and living room as well. Thank you. I uh, hope you have a great week. Don't hesitate again to contact us either at the church or contact me if there's anything we can do to be of service to you. God bless.